Hey y'all, in this video I'm going to show you how I imported an image to create a custom background in my preview toolpaths window in vCarve Desktop, vCarve Pro, and Aspire versions 9.5 and later. This was not an option in version 9.0 and earlier. I'm also going to show you how to import more textures into your wood category or metal category into the appearance in the preview toolpaths window as well as in job setup down here in the material settings. So let's go ahead and get into a new session of Aspire and let's first look at how to add a custom background to the 3D view. By default, your 3D view background is this gradient color. Now, if we come over here under Edit to Options, we can see here we have the 3D view settings, and it is set to gradient over here. And here is where the background colors are selected. Now, you can click on this here, and you'll see that you have a square with three dots. We can click on that and you can change that gradient color by choosing one of these pre selected colors or come up here to custom and get into whatever color you'd like. But that's not what we're going to focus on today. What we're going to focus on is changing the background to an image. Now, if I click up here where it says gradient, I've got an arrow indicating this is a drop down menu. And one of the choices is image. That's what we're going to be using in just a minute. We come down here a little bit further, we see image file path. This space over here is where you'll enter the path to the image that you want to use as your background both in the 3D view here and in the preview window over in the toolpath tab. Before we can change this over to image, we need to know the path to the image that we want to use. So I'll come down here to File Explorer and I've already got my folder open that has the image of the back of my house. Now, I went for a large image. You can see that this image is, let me just click on it and we'll go over here. Dimensions are 4,032 pixels wide by 3,024 pixels tall. So it's a fairly large picture with good resolution. And that's what I want. Now, when I navigated to the folder, Depending upon the folder settings you have set in Windows, you should see an address bar up here. If you don't see this address bar, I'll show you another way of getting this address. But basically, this is part of the path to this image. And I'll show you how I'm going to copy this path and put it into Aspire to set this image as my background. First thing I'll want to do is come up here and just click in this address bar and you'll notice how it changes to this path. This is the folder that contains the image. So it automatically highlighted. I can now right click and copy that path. And if I click off, it goes back to the display that it had before. Now I want to come back over to Aspire. And right here, I'm going to right click and paste. Now that's the path to the image, but that's not the image itself. I need to enter the image itself. So 
with my cursor flashing over here after the last character in the path, this being uh, the letter S, I'm going to enter a forward slash. And on my computer, the forward slash button is right below the backspace button. I'll tap on that to enter another front sl uh, forward slash. Then I'll come back down to my folder. And I'm going to click on the image. Give it a second and click it again. Then I'm going to highlight and copy the name of the image with the file extension. That's important. Click off. Then I'm going to come back to Aspire. And click in this blank here. And using my cursor right button, I'm going to run all the way to the end. Then I'll hold down the control key and tap the letter V to paste. The path to my image is now set, so I can click off down here. That is the image that it's going to use for the background. Now to complete this change, I'll come up here and click in Gradient, where it says Gradient under Shaded Background Style. Click the drop down menu, switch over to image, then click OK. And the background has changed to that image. So now I can go over to my toolpath tab, bring up my preview, and for this demonstration, I don't want to use the Canadian maple texture. I want to go up here into Sheet 1, get into Appearance. Let's change over to a solid color. And I'm going to change that color to white. Because I want it to match the trim fairly closely. Click off down here. And I'm going to preview all the tool paths of my Barn Star here. Okay, with all the tool paths finished, I can double click on the waist to get rid of that background. And now I can attempt to size and place my preview. From here on out, everything is going to be an approximate, and there are some compromises we're going to have to make. To size this star, I'm going to have to guess as far as where a two foot tall barn star would be placed here. To size it, to reduce the size, I'll just use my scroll wheel on my mouse and zoom out. And that has the effect of reducing its size. Now I can move it into position. I'm going to put my cursor over the center of this star and I'm going to press down on my scroll wheel and drag that star right up here into the approximate position. Now, again, I cannot get this precisely two feet tall. But what I can do is when I'm contemplating the project, I can come out here, climb up on a ladder and measure and figure out approximately where the top of a two foot tall barn star would be. And on my particular house, it would be, generally speaking, in this area. I could raise it up some. I could lower it down some. But I now know that a two-foot-tall barn star will fit here. Now, I need to position it a little bit better. It's slightly off-center, and it's kind of the perspective isn't right. But for this, we'll just use our normal manipulation tools. I'm going to use the left mouse button to kind of turn it a little bit, skew it slightly this way, then skew it a little bit more, then bring it to where my bottom two points here are approximately the same distance from this horizontal line on the house itself. Now, I mentioned that we have some compromises, and that is, for instance, the shadowing under the eave here is in the image. 
and I can't apply it to the tip of this star, but I could technically export this and then bring it into a photo editing software and apply a bit of a shadow there. But from here, from this position, I can come over and save a preview image, which I have already done. Let me navigate to the correct folder. And that's the preview image that you saw in the thumbnail of this picture and in my community tab posts. It's the same image. So I could, for instance, name this demo preview. Save it. Now when I come down here to that folder, there is the demo image that we just saved. So I could send this to the client, to the customer, so they can get a better idea of what that project is going to look like if they commission me to carve them this two-foot barn star and we put it up on their house. So that is one way of getting an image into Aspire or VCarve for use in the preview toolpaths window. Now there is another way, and this is going to be dependent on how you have Windows set up. Now I have the address bar here set up so that when I go into a folder, I see the address. Well, not everybody has that set up that way. So if you don't have your folder set up to where you have an address bar here, you're not out of luck. You can just come to the image that you want to use for your background. Double click it. And the image opens up in the Windows Picture Viewer. Right click the image and then come down here to the bottom in this menu to file information and click that. It'll open this side panel. Right here is the folder path to this image. So you can select this, copy it, and then paste that into Aspire or VCarve. Now something I like to do just so I can make sure I get it right before I copy and paste is I'll open up Notepad and start a notepad document and just hold down control tap the letter v and paste that address right there then add my front slash close this window close this window go back into the folder and once again highlight the entire title with the file extension control c to copy Click off, bring notepad back up, make sure my cursor's here next to the forward slash, control V, and I have the entire path to that image pasted in this notepad document. So now all I have to do, highlight the entire thing, control C to copy, then come back over to Aspire, go into edit options and enter my path. I can click on this and paste it. So that's a second way of getting this path here into Aspire. Now this is not a permanent thing obviously. We can change this back to the standard gradient very easily and that is simply by going up here to shaded background style Click on the drop down menu, go back to gradient, click OK, and there we go. So that's how you create a custom background for VCarve and Aspire. Go to the edit menu, options, 
enter the path to the image that you want to use. Then come up to Shaded Background Style. Select Image. Click OK. And there is your new background. While we're here, let me go back over here and get rid of this background. Go back to Gradient. And what I like to do is when I'm done using that image, I'll just clear that entire line, get rid of it all so that I have nothing in this blank. I'm set back to Gradient. OK. Now I come back to a straight Z view, reset my preview, and I'm going to go back to medium wood, which is what I normally use for my 3D previews. Now, if we look here in the appearance, there are several ways of adding new textures. The software comes with quite a few. But if you've noticed, a lot of them, the grain runs in different directions. Like we'll go over here to Pine Old. And we see that the grain runs vertically in this texture. Well, is there a way to turn this to where it's horizontal? There are situations where you're going to want horizontal grain. Well, yes, there is. And let me show you that right now. What we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get into the application data folder that has all these bitmap textures in it. So we'll come up here to File. And come down here to Open Application Data Folder. Click on that. Here is Bitmap Textures. So we'll double click on that window to go into, or on that folder to go into a new folder. And here we have wood. Here are the bitmap images that the program uses for our preview over here. Let me get back into this. And we can see that there are several pictures here, but there is no real rhyme or reason to which way the grain direction runs. Well, I want to change that. For instance, I want. Um, the dark wood image here, the grain runs horizontal. What if I want to uh, use a vertical pattern? Well, I'll go ahead and close my image preview. And again, I'm trying to do this with programs that you already have at your disposal. I'll select the image, right click it, then come down here in this folder and open with paint comes with every Windows program. So I've got my image open in Paint. I'm going to come over here to Rotate. Rotate right 90 degrees. And I'll take a look at that. Uh, that looks OK. If I decided I didn't like it that way, I could then rotate it 180 degrees and it runs the other direction. I think I kind of prefer this cathedraling in the grain here being based at the bottom. So I'll rotate it 180 degrees, and I think I prefer that. So with this now rotated, I can come up here to File, Save as, JPEG Picture. Then I can navigate to this folder, and we see it's already dark wood. I'm going to add a space hyphen space capital V to indicate this is vertical then I'll save it now I can close out a paint and if I look there is dark wood V now let's see if it's added this texture automatically come up here into appearance and scroll up into my woods, and I have dark wood. I do not have dark wood V. Okay. So if I look down here under my wood category, go down here to the bottom, it says add new texture. I can click on that. And now let's navigate back to this 
folder, again, Program Data, Vectric, Aspire, version 11, Bitmap Textures, Wood. There is my dark wood V. I'll click on that, click Open, and there is my vertical dark wood. If I look here, there it is. So, adding a texture is that simple. Now, what if there is a wood that I want that isn't in here? Let's say I want some wenge. I have walnut, I have light walnut, but I don't have wenge. Well, that's where the internet is a major bonus. I have discovered a great source for wood grain textures, and that is a website called the Wood Database. So let me just do a search for the Wenge wood that I want. W E N G E. And there is the wood. And here is the wooddatabase.com. If I click on that web page, it will take me to this page that tells me everything about Wenge. And it has a preview image. I can click on that image and I can see this is a very nice looking sample. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to right click, open the image in a new tab. And the reason I do that is because a lot of times these preview images are not the full size of the image they have. Close that and I'll go over to that image that got opened in the new tab. I'm going to save this. Save image as. Let's go up here to wood. And I'm going to name this Wenge. And capital V for vertical grain. So I'll save that. It's done. I can minimize that, and there is my Wenge. Again, I'll right click, open with paint. I'll rotate it. Let's see, I want this larger area to be on the bottom, and this tighter grain to be on the top. So I'm going to rotate this to the left by 90 degrees. Rotate left 90 degrees, and there we go. I think that looks better. Just my personal opinion. Then I'll save as JPEG picture. Come back into this folder. And I'm going to change the name to Wenge H for horizontal. Save that. Now I can close out a paint, and there I have the Wenge horizontal as well as vertical. So now I can come back over here into Aspire, do the drop down, it's not listed. I will add a new texture, come down. And for this, I'll choose Wenge Vertical. And it's changed my texture to Wenge. So, adding textures or editing textures within the program and even changing backgrounds is a lot simpler than you would think as long as you have the path to the photo that you want to use. Come into Program Options, 3D View Settings, Image File Path, click, right click, paste, change the shaded background style to Image, click OK, and there you go. This is available not only in the preview toolpaths window, but if you come over here 
to the drawing tab it's standard in your 3d view so i hope you got something out of this video and if you did i do hope you'll give me a thumbs up now i know i didn't answer every question that you could possibly have so this afternoon at noon pacific 3 p.m eastern i'll be hosting a live q a session right here on my YouTube channel where we can talk about anything I've demonstrated in this video or any of my other videos. Again, that's today at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, right here on my YouTube channel. And I've put a link to that live Q&A session down in the description box of this video. Now, these live Q&A sessions, not only are they a lot of fun, but they're a great reason to go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. And when you click that red subscribe button, go ahead and click that little bell icon right next to it. Then you'll get a notification every time I post a video and every time I go live. So. I hope to see you this afternoon for the live Q&A session. And as always, whether you subscribe to my channel or not, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to watch, and y'all take care.